Welcome to this Between Seasons episode of the She's All That video podcast. The upcoming season's theme is business women putting a new innovative edge on business. And after having had such a fun conversation with Elizabeth Gerhardt, the host of Fireside and the co-host of Passage to Profit on iHeartRadio about what I'm doing in my business, teaching entrepreneurs how to become amazing podcast guests for profit, PR and social proof. I decided to drop that in during the hiatus as a prelude to the new season. Being a podcast guest is one of the smartest and most cost-effective things that you could be adding to your marketing plan this year. For the money, the benefits to your business and your brand go far beyond what almost any other marketing effort could achieve right now. The price of admission and success is being an amazing, personable podcast guest who tells a great story with relevance to the show and the audience and, for their own purposes, knows how to make it really work for their business goals. And that's what I'm all about doing with my clients. She's all that. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Gearhart. I'm here with September Smith. And what she does is she helps people become podcast guests. Hey, September. Hi, Elizabeth. Thanks so much for having me on here. Yes, I've got the Of Course Consulting Company, through which I work with clients to help them become amazing podcast guests. And that's really important, as I'm sure you know. But I also am a podcast host myself, the host and producer of the She's All That video podcast. And I work with entrepreneurs, occasionally social impact leaders, but mostly entrepreneurs to help them become amazing podcast guests. And the reason I do that is because right now, being a podcast guest is such a strong way to be building your credibility in your field, to be reaching larger audiences. And it's also a stepping stone to bigger and bigger media opportunities. And right now, everybody needs the edge that they can get. And podcast guesting, as much as we hear, podcasts are huge this year. I was just telling you recently, uh, just previously about how Forbes magazine cited podcasts as being one of the big marketing channels for this 2021 and onward, they said. You could be a podcaster, as we are, or more simply, a whole lot less work. You could be a podcast guest. And be featured and be a star on somebody's show and have your interview featuring you across multiple channels. So I teach my people how to, first of all, access that free PR that you can get through this, how to find the right show for you and for your business, how to put together your signature talk so that when you are on that show, you sound like a rock star and people want to like hang on to the very last word. As we both know, the tech is kind of important. Like, do you have the proper microphone? Do you sound great? And if it's a video, do you look good? And then once that podcast comes out, how to leverage that content to make the maximum gain for your efforts. So that's what I'm doing with my clients because this is the year. This is like, like Facebook lives were seven years ago. You know, you'll probably remember when businesses were like using Facebook lives. How exciting was that? Wow. They got all kinds of eyeballs. Everybody and their dog is doing Facebook Lives right now. It doesn't catch nearly the attention that it used to. This is Facebook Live seven years ago. It's so being some, a podcast guest. Right. So if somebody comes to you and says, how do I become a podcast guest? What is the first thing you would tell them? The first thing I want to know is, if they're an entrepreneur, do you have an offer ready to go? You're not in a nascent stage of business you know your messaging and you know what your call to action is. Because if if you don't have that, that's a whole other piece of development that has to happen in your company. Because when you're doing a podcast, you're out there, you're getting a message out. You want to make sure it's the right message, but also four years from now, five years from now, when somebody Googles you and podcasts are becoming search, searchable, your podcast episodes are going to be popping up in Google searches or whatever we're using at that time for searching And you don't want some episode from three years ago when you didn't know what you were talking about popping up and you sound like a maniac. It's out there forever. So make sure you know what you're talking about. So that's the first thing I ask them. Do you already have your offers in place? Is your business established and making sales? And you have your messaging and your call to action established, which maybe isn't intuitive, but that's really important. Well, that is so important. I remember when we started Passage to Profit on iHeartRadio, we would get people coming to us wanting to be on the show and they didn't even have a website. And we had to start telling them, you at least have to have a website and you really should work with somebody to really get your messaging and your presence down, right? Because 
now we've got the show established, we're a little more picky with who we let on and we look for people who are going to sound good to a radio audience or a, you know, sound audience that where there is no video, even though we do put it on YouTube and you have to be entertaining. You can't drone on, right? Yes. Yes. And there's, I think there's a key um, misunderstanding that, that I see a lot of and people who are aspiring to become a podcast guest. And if you're doing it for your business and you have a goal in mind, it's a business goal. If you're going to all this effort, you, there, there should be a payoff in the end. Mm -hmm. A lot of people mix up podcasts for this purpose with a TEDx talk. And they are two very different things. A TEDx talk is for inspiration. It's for maybe a bit of knowledge transfer. There, you are not changing minds and, and having a call to action at the end so that you want people taking action. When we come out of a TEDx talk, for the most part, it was either that was funny or that was interesting, but we don't feel compelled to get on a call with somebody or take out our wallet. And I mean, it sounds crass, but that that is why it's marketing. This is why you're doing it. So that is something that you need to understand. And to do that, you need to know your messaging. You can't just get on there and talk. So what do you think makes a person a good podcast guest? Somebody who's prepared. They have their signature talk. They know what they're talking about. They know where they want to go with this. Um, they can rein in. They don't as a host, I guess it's easy enough to kind of pull them back when they're going off road with their story, but uh, somebody that kind of knows what they want to talk about and can stay on point. Enthusiasm and personality. Oh my God, that's huge. Yeah. Somebody who, who, who really brings it so that you are not only interesting to watch if it's a video, you're also interested, you're fascinating to listen to. And because as we know, podcast listeners engage with the content in a whole different way than they do with video. The, the average podcaster is using podcasts when they are at home doing menial tasks, when they're in the car commuting, or when they're at the gym working out. They want to turn it on and they want to leave it. I, I don't want to have to find another show. So it's almost guaranteed if you're entertaining, if you're insightful, if you're engaging, they are going to be listening to you for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour which is an amazing opportunity when you're looking at it in terms of marketing. So what do um, you uh, do with somebody who talks like that? <laughs> well, there's, I mean, there's only so much you can do, but I think what you have to get across to the person is, is the importance of this. It, this is not just a whim. I'm not making you do this because I want to change your personality. If you want your business to have sales stem out of this, People have to feel like you're a person that they'd want to do business with. So I'm not saying, you know, like go all crazy and be something that you're not, but you have to do what you can to muster the, the interest and the vibrancy in your voice and in your delivery. If you want people to listen to you, if you can't do that, well, I can't help you. So do you, but everybody's got that ability. Yes, everybody has that ability. I agree. Do you tell people to practice? I tell people practice in front of a mirror. I practice in front of a mirror. And sometimes I bore myself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But what do you actually tell people to get over those kind of hurdles where they're really not sounding interesting, let's say? I think the uh, one thing that I would suggest is try to remember a time when you were at a social event. Remember when we got in the same room with people? That <laughs> oh, yeah. Distant memory. Which I remember a time when you were in company with other humans and you were having a great time and you were engaged in the conversation. What was your energy level? What was the, what was the vibrance you had going on there? How did you feel? You felt relaxed. You felt comfortable. You were forthcoming. Hopefully you've had that experience in your life. I think most people have. Try to recapture that essence because as much as we, we sometimes think like, oh, this is my business. So I have to be a certain way. This is what a business person does. No, people don't do business with your business. They do business with you. And you are the look and feel of your business. You're, you're the ambassador of your business. So try to come forth in a way that's genuinely you, but maybe even amped up a little bit if necessary. So I've encountered that. I've encountered people that are so terrified of being themselves that they come across as very inauthentic because yes. they're trying so hard to sound serious and be taken seriously and not look, you know, whatever they think people expect. So do you, you teach authenticity then too, right? I, I, you can only, you can only get it across in terms of 
people are not impressed with some fake you that you think your representative you that you think they want to see they want to see you and if they don't if 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 you're the kind of business that that actually would be having interactions with your client if you're not the kind of person in your authentic self that they want to do business with they're not your client you're not selling everybody right because if they don't like the real you you're probably not going to like the real them oh well, it's going to be a terrible relationship <laughs> exactly so the I, I heard a, a great phrase a couple of years ago, only help the ones swimming towards you. So the ones that do like the authentic you, those are your clients. Do not be afraid to be the real you. Oh, I love that. So do people practice with you? Do you, but you help them craft their story too, right? Yeah. Um, in, in my program, the, the simplest program is, first of all, what's your story? A lot of people have to some degree, they have their messaging, they have their, and some people have a signature talk. So we look at that and we say, is that signature talk or what we're going to create? Is it something that tells your business story in a way that when people listen to it, they're going to see the problem you solve, the solution you provide, why you are uniquely positioned to be that person, how you can help them. And then by the end of the listen, they're feeling like either what, what I shoot for in my podcast and what I try to help my clients with is by the end of that podcast, by the end of your presentation, they should either be thinking, I need to hire that person or I need to tell so-and-so about that person. Because you are now, you now have real estate in their imagination. You're, you've been memorable and they, they know you and they realize why what you do is important. Well, can you give me an example of somebody that you worked with? You don't have to say their name. Okay. Um... I have worked with a, a very, 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 very clever woman. She has, in this last year, as I'm sure you're aware, we women took the bulk of the economic hit during what they're calling the she session. And one year later, 2.5 million women, as Kamala Harris pointed out, Vice President Kamala Harris pointed out, 2.5 million women are not working that were working last year. Right. So there are a lot of really amazingly qualified, savvy women out there who just remain without employment. So in this woman's case, we knew that what she was starting up as a business was something that was a little bit unique, kind of like podcasting for business marketing purposes would was or may still be for some people, but it was really valuable. So what we did to it was to create her signature talk in a way that introduced the problem that she was solving so that the people that she wanted to get the attention of and wanted to be hired by the organizations, because she was a B2B, crafted it in a way so that they saw the problem she solved and they recognized it as this is our problem too and it's one that we don't know how to, hand, how to handle. What's at stake if they don't deal with it and if they try to deal with it themselves in-house, which you're not going to be successful? And then we got into what her solution was, and that's the key to it. In that case, part of hers was it was necessary to educate the listener. We like we have to craft it in a way that it, it doesn't sound like, now pay attention class first, step one, step two. But through the messaging of her signature talk, by the end of that, any organizations who may be in a position to, to hire a consultant like her now understand what a time saving, a money saving, what an amazing package of expertise they can get. And in her signature talk, you, it explains exactly how she works with people. But it ended up coming out, coming off like a story. So she then uses that as, as her signature talk and as the theme of her podcast guesting. And she has grown that to more podcast guesting appearances, to magazine articles, newspaper articles. And so she's, she's, she crafted that story and she really leveraged it. And that's what I help people do. So it is so important that you say the word story because what we learned from iHeart, the professionals at iHeart, when we started on the radio was people want to hear a story. They want to know your story. And if you can bring people on the show that have a great story, people are going to listen. Yeah. We are, as humans, we're encoded for that. That's how, um, when you look at ancient cultures, like, for example, the Aboriginal peoples of Australia, they, would, for thousands of years, were able to communicate the knowledge of their tribe only because it was encoded in story. It's how our brains work. We build our understanding of things based on a framework of story. 
And I, I remember like way back the first time somebody was talking about, you know, like, oh, you need to know your story. I thought, seriously? Because I was thinking, you know, bedtime stories for children. But then when I started getting into the psychology of it and through my master's degree, learning about how actually story is a way of building knowledge and understanding and connection between people, mm-hmm. then it became really obvious to me. But still, some people are like, story, what are you talking about? Story. But it, it is key to how we communicate and how we ultimately engage and persuade. And that's, again, that's what you want to be doing with your podcast guesting. Excellent. Wow. I feel like I should take your course. <laughs> take my cars. <laughs> well, what the, one, one of the things that I love to, because I, I personally, like you, I love interviewing people. I love finding that thing that is just so amazing about what they're doing. So what I do in my high ticket program is at the end of the program, everyone gets to be interviewed just like it was your podcast. So if you're a podcast virgin, this is your time to do it that first time. So, and you can see the video later and you can look at it and you can realize, okay, I was strong there. I was like, what was I talking about there? And I should have done this. And so it, when you finally do get your first podcasting gig, it's not new to you. You've had that experience and you've checked out your microphones and how everything works and you don't have to worry about that your first time. So that's an added extra I put into that package. That's really nice. So you, how many on, different online courses do you have? I just stay with the, that package. And there is one that is a group one that is larger group and not as much, hand, much hands-on. I mean, you get all the same instructional materials, but with my high ticket package, it's, I get involved with you. I want to have as much information about you as I can. And we craft your story. And I want to make sure your story is exactly as it should be, that it's killer. And from there, then we craft your messaging for your, one of the really important things is with that story that radiates out to your pitch. Your pitch has to resonate with it. It helps you find out the right show for you. It helps you create your own, like we were talking earlier. I I recommend people write their own show notes. There's no guarantee that the host of your podcast that you go on is going to use them. But hey, as podcast hosts, we're pressed for time. If somebody was to supply me with their show notes with all their keywords and their hashtags in there, I would gladly take that. So then you ensure that you have your story right there in the notes. Excellent. So do you work with people in person or will you work with people in person after we're through quarantine? Yes, actually, usually I spend the winter working from Mexico. This year, I couldn't. I live on the West Coast of Canada. I don't (laughs) want to be here in the winter, but I was here this year. But yes, my... um, if all goes well, if all goes as it should, you know, pandemic wise, my plan is to, as soon as possible, be bringing people that are interested to come down and work with me in Mexico, which would be particularly interesting, more attractive, I think, in the winter, and work in studios there. Where in Mexico? Puerto Vallarta. Okay, I'll, I'll meet you there next winter. <laughs> I'll have the margaritas. <laughs> Uh, that sounds wonderful. So right now, are you working with people all over the world? What's your reach? Yes, yes. Um, th- the farthest I've had is, well, Japan, New Zealand, Australia, North America, Europe. Yeah, no Antarctica, no Africa yet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I do have one person slated from Colombia. I'm not sure when that's going to happen. Excellent. So... We all need to tell our story and it, the, the stories are all different, but the way mm-hmm. we tell them is kind of the same. And that's where you come in, right? Exactly. And right now, podcasts are hot. Like I said, this is podcast guessing right now is the Facebook Live of 2015. So it's like, get in, do it now. Yes. Do it now till we move on to something else, right? It's And it's going to happen. Because remember when we thought Facebook Lives were so amazing, we couldn't imagine, you know, that everybody and their dog would be doing it, but we've gotten there and now no one listens. So right now it's podcast. And Clubhouse. Clubhouse is, is also, a bit, but again, the same story you craft for your podcast, you're using over there on Clubhouse. It's right. all and, your story. And Clubhouse is growing. I'm on Clubhouse. So it's, it's growing into a I, thing. I think I met you on Clubhouse. Oh, was that where we met? Oh, okay. So awesome. 
Yeah, I love Clubhouse. I haven't been on there this week, but I, um, I, I find it's what I really like about it. You can just listen to it whenever, whatever you're doing. And then if you do want to chime in, you can raise your hand and chime in. So that's why it's different than podcasts, but it's kind of like a cross between a podcast and a panel. I don't know what, what else, because the audience gets to ask questions, which is so cool. Exactly. The thing that the difference, the way I look at it, you're right now, your clubhouse is one, it's practice speaking. And it's also a great way to network, but it's impermanent. Your podcast episodes for better or worse will be there for years to come. So That's, make sure it's for better. <laughs> come come work with me and we'll make sure it's for better. And and I think that, so I have to say with the radio show, we've been getting more attention. We've been standing out more during this time. And I think part of the reason is we have a professional producer at iHeartRadio producing our podcast. So the quality of our podcast is super high. And so maybe not everybody can have that. But if you yeah. can have the quality of your content and your delivery yes. super high, that's as good as that's as good as you, you're gonna do, right? One of the things that I recommend for people when they're looking for their shows, like there's a whole lot of criteria you have to use as a filter for your shows, but also what is the quality and do they edit? Right. I I I am pretty fastidious about editing sometimes too much with the podcast that I produce, because I, I want my guests to look their best, but I know I've listened to some podcasts where there's a whole big blooper there in the middle and they have this discussion about, well, that was wrong. Can I start that again? Sure, we'll edit it out, but they don't. So right. make sure that you're going to be on a show that has decent editing and decent sound quality. Right, because people notice and, and it helps you stand out and look more professional. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. So is there anything else that you'd like to say about your business? Um, about my business, I just want to say that I am ridiculously, earnestly passionate about this this year. I just think that this is something that all entrepreneurs should be thinking about. And not just entrepreneurs, this gives you a platform. Uh, some of the people that I work with have been, as I said, social impact leaders, mm -hmm. the power of podcast. It, it's a piece of media that you can use. And I, as I mentioned earlier, think of it in terms of, uh, I'm an Ani DeFranco fan, her line from one of her famous spoken word poems, the end line was, every tool is a weapon if you hold it right. You are creating something that you are going to be able to use right. in the future as a tool or a weapon. So definitely you should be looking at leveraging this right now. Absolutely. I, one last thing too, people are searching on using voice. So they're asking Alexa, they're asking Siri and what comes up in answer a lot of times is the podcast. So if I, that's why I asked you a couple specific questions. So if I ask you, how do I get on someone's podcast and you answer me and we transcribe it and Google's looking, they'll see Oh yeah. my God, the value of that, that, that is something I get in with people who care to get geeky. I mean, I can get way too geeky, but the SEO of, of being on a podcast is incredible because with every set of notes that go with it, and as you and I know, those, if you're not familiar, those are the, 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 the text, the content below either the podcast episode itself, or if you're doing video podcasts as we do, also underneath the YouTube mm -hmm. video. That has all your keywords in it. It has your name. It has, if you've crafted it right, it has so much value for SEO to it. And these are searchable. And you are now, if you're on a podcast, you are on more than a dozen different platforms. If your host has it distributed to all of the big platforms like Spotify and iTunes and iHeartRadio, your stuff is out there and it's all in links that are facing back to your website. The SEO value of that is incredible. See, I geek out on that stuff. Yeah, well, <laughs> me too. <laughs> so, uh, I think it's a benefit that a lot of people don't realize is there. So had to bring that yes. up. Yeah. Yes. Inbound so, links are so important. And, and what other way could you for free and that easily get inbound links coming from so many different platforms, so many different sources? Right. And I think one last thing, if people, I think you referenced this before, if people have heard you talking and they like you or seen you talking and they like you, then they're the middle of your marketing funnel. So if they call yes. you, they're already halfway, three quarters convinced they want to work with yeah. you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You've been in their head. 
Yeah. Like video is strong. Video is incredible. Yeah. But like I said, most people, the average listener is spending much more time on that podcast. They're at the gym for their hour workout. You have been in their head. They've been listening to you. You have changed the way they see the world. You are now an entity in their imagination. We're driving to Pittsburgh next month. We'll both be vaccinated. It's a six hour drive from where we are. And we're going to listen to podcasts the whole time. That's what we do is we listen to podcasts while we make these long trips. So, and people are going to be doing that more and more in 2021 as things open up, right? And they're probably going to drive because the airlines are so awful. <laughs> and they're going to listen to podcasts while they're driving, right? And even, even if you decide you want to take a plane, even when you're not getting a signal, you can still download those podcast episodes. Like I've done that before. I'm going somewhere and if I want three hours worth of podcasts, you download them all and put them in a playlist and then you can just listen to them. And again, somebody is in my head for like 40 minutes to an hour. You feel like you know them by the end of that. Yeah, you do. So it's, I would highly recommend it for anybody. Um, I think it's a wonderful business tool, as you've said many times. Mm -hmm. So if people are afraid to do it, or feeling secure, you're exactly the right person to come. To. Well, if, if they're even interested in exploring it, I have a, a free five-step guide on what it takes. Here are the steps you need to take, because if you skip any of those steps, things are going to go awry. And if they want to talk, we can put my link down in the, in the notes and they can get in touch with me and we can see and map out how could we do this with you? What's your route to getting podcast interviews and start growing your business and getting more media coverage? And, you know, once you get used to it or or more comfortable with it, it's kind of fun, don't you think? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I'm I'm suggesting we want to build megalomaniacs out of people. and (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. If your goal is 100 podcast guests (laughs) appointments in a year, that's maybe you are a megalomaniac. No, no, no. (laughs) Yeah, no, it is. It is fun because, I mean, if nothing else, you're talking about what you love and you're talking about, hopefully, a responsive, sympathetic host what's not to like exactly so is there anything else you want to say before we sign off if you've got any questions get in touch with me i would love to help you harness this opportunity of 2021 excellent thank you so much for dropping by here in this interseason episode of the she's all that video podcast if you're interested in learning more about what it takes to become an amazing podcast guest for pr profit and social proof for your business Down in the notes, you'll find a link to the free five-step guide that'll give you an idea of how to get started or book a call with me and let's map out how we can get you there. She's all that.